trying to figure out how to state this. Um, there's one thing that we know for sure about dopamine. No one really understands the complexity of dopamine. If you do a deep dive on dopamine, your head is going to literally spin because there are so many theories. Just when they say they have it figured out, um, well, no, that doesn't work. They'll say it's a motivation molecule or the thing that gives you pleasure or the thing that's involved with reward. No, it's not. It's associated with these behaviors, but it's not the thing that gives you these sensations. You give yourself these sensations. Dopamine has many, many, many different functions. In one part of the brain, it works this way. In another part of the brain, it works completely differently. Dopamine is involved with motion and movement, like body movement. That's why like in Parkinson's disease, the person will always have low dopamine and they're very rigid. They can't move freely. Dopamine is associated with behaviors and certain emotions, but anyone who is on the lower emotional scale is going to have low dopamine and have low other neurotransmitters as well as low hormones. Their entire biochemistry is going to be on the low side. Dopamine is also involved in the sleep cycles. It's involved in the gastrointestinal motility, the movement of things through your GI system, food intake, learning, kidney function, blood pressure, and yes, it does get increased with pleasure, but it also gets increased with stress and pain. So when someone is using a drug to help balance this one molecule, boy, does that come with a package, which I'm going to talk about. There's been a recent like upsurge of people doing dopamine detox. We're trying to detoxify this toxic dopamine hormone. The problem is not dopamine, okay? Yes, we need to balance it out if it's low. It's the synthetic sensations or the experiences or the stimulus that we're doing that we need to get rid of. Whether it's scrolling with social media 24 hours a day on TikTok, gambling, nicotine, drugs, and then you also have like caffeine and pornography. All these things are artificial or synthetic ways of experiencing certain sensations. And when you try to get these sensations artificially or synthetically, it comes with a package. But I think we should, instead of doing a, a dopamine detox, we should do a bad lifestyle detox. There's certain medical problems that involve low dopamine. You have Parkinson's, schizophrenia, ADD or ADHD, and even depression. And people that treat these conditions to try to increase dopamine are doing something that they just don't understand. They don't ever look at the diet. They don't look at the nutritional cofactors that could be involved. You have to realize that dopamine is a system. It's a pathway. It doesn't ever work as a single molecule. It's involved in this complex biochemical pathway. And when you treat it as an individual molecule, you will always lose. And when we're talking about losing, I'm talking about mainly with the side effects that come as a package. Not only do these medications deplete other neurotransmitters, but for example, anti-schizophrenia medication has a side effect. It can create motivational disorders, paranoia, even lactation in men and women. And another side effect is addictive behaviors. Now let's take another category of medications, which are antipsychotic medications. What are the side effects of those? One is Parkinson's symptoms. And then when people take medication for Parkinson's, okay, one of the side effects is they become a gambler, which is a, an addiction. So you have to understand that dopamine has many different functions and it works differently in different parts of the body. And on top of that, dopamine is a neurotransmitter. It's a signaling molecule that works within the nervous system. It's like a communication hormone-like particle. And hormones are the communication particle that works through the blood. And you know what's interesting about that? All your hormones, all of them require dopamine for those hormones to work. I mean, there's over 100,000 research papers on dopamine in PubMed right now, all trying to find a new treatment without the side effects, but they're never going to be successful because it's impossible. Dopamine, again, is not a single little molecule that acts on its own to create this one specific effect. It creates many, many different effects for different parts of your body. You can have years of stress, bad eating, 
have deficiencies of the cofactors that make dopamine and end up with low dopamine. You can also have a serious traumatic event, let's say a loss of a loved one, and be very depressed and have low dopamine because of that lowered emotion. But by trying to increase that hormone without looking at the whole picture, it's not going to work. It's just, it's not logical. So what can someone do? Well, number one, start getting rid of the artificial synthetic uh, experiences or stimulus. Number two, start looking at natural ways to help balance dopamine in other neurotransmitters. And I'll give you a couple. Consistent, regular exercise. Being outside will naturally increase dopamine. What's interesting about dopamine, it works with serotonin in opposites. So people that are inside a lot have more serotonin uh, and people that are outside have more dopamine. Now, I'm talking about the relative uh, ratios here, but the more outside that you are, the more dopamine that you're going to have. Uh, even the sun and even vitamin D3 can help increase dopamine. You also have other experiences like music, the arts, doing things that you like, being connected to people, and also having all the cofactors, the things that help this hormone be um, produced, like uh, tyrosinase. And even having the cofactors, these are things that help uh, the production of this dopamine, like uh, tyrosine, which is an amino acid. You can get that just by consuming or focusing on adequate good protein sources, like animal protein. And just as a side note, if you have very low neurotransmitters and you have a lot of body problems and you need a lot of repair, it's very important to consume a little more protein and make sure that is animal protein as well as animal fat for the healing process, because that's going to give you the raw materials to help uh, build up these neurotransmitters. But a lot of these neurotransmitters are also influenced by the gut microbiome. So having a healthy gut is also very important. And the other two uh, nutrients that are involved in dopamine are vitamin C. You can get that from leafy greens or sauerkraut, make sure it's raw. And copper, which is a trace mineral. Now, where do you get copper? from shellfish, okay, or seafood. If you just have seafood or shellfish once a week, you'll get enough copper. But just as a side note to that, if you consume a lot of zinc without the copper, uh, you can create a copper deficiency. Also, having just a lot of stress in your life uh, and consuming a lot of sugar will increase the demand for this vitamin C in copper. And just the last point about this topic, you, you want to look at the body as a whole not as an individual molecule. The body uh, molecules are not in control. They're at the effect side, and they're involved in biochemical pathways that involve many different steps, and each one of those steps involve enzymes, and each one of those enzymes involve uh, cofactors. Those are like vitamins and minerals. So a lot of this comes back to having the right diet, which unfortunately many doctors do not look at that piece of the puzzle. So look at the whole body. If you're gonna treat something like this, use natural remedies that don't have side effects. And one last little point about dopamine, your gut microbiome help you make neurotransmitters. For more information on that, you should watch this video right here.